So, Napoleon. Thank you. Absolutely. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good? Um, I've decided... Oh, there we go. Nice. After the Smart City talk, uh, I'm officially renaming this Smart Retail. Does it, does it exist, right? <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to run you through a few things. That's, if you're on Twitter, that's my handle, at Web Wednesday. So uh, I am omnipresent, because I'm talking about Omni Retail, Omni Channel. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I've been in Hong Kong 25 years, 20 years in technology, uh, and 15 in marketing and five in e-commerce. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about retail omnichannel. This is my uh, Twitter account. You might recognize those two people with great hairstyles. And if you're on WeChat, scan me now. Nobody's scanning. You're not on WeChat. OK, so let's get into it. The problem about all technology is we use too much jargon. Uh, yesterday, I was doing a panel about blockchain. I guarantee you, at the end of that panel, people were so confused, what is blockchain? The problem about the uh, retail technology world, e-commerce, marketing, is we have far too many acronyms, right? We get lost in acronyms. The vendors scare you with words like BOPIS, which is the American version of buy online, pick up in store, right? Uh, in, in China, they call omnichannel, O to O, because it's easier to say online, it's offline. But out of all of these, the most important acronym is the one that's about to disappear. There we go. ROPO. Does anybody know what that stands for? No? Oh, you do. Um, so ROPO is about what people actually do, and I'm sure you guys do this too, is that 90%, almost 90% of people and this is from KPMG, the little quote here. There you go. 90% um, of people will research something online before they buy it offline. So this is a big challenge for a retailer because a retailer goes, how do I, how do I tap into those people who are online? How do I get them to come into my store? Because my store is a new experience. It costs a lot of money. Uh, and I'm investing in changing the experience in the store. So. Here's uh, good old KPMG. I'm pulling out lots of data from you there. <laughs> what I think is interesting here is why do people still shop online, right? People shop online mo main, uh, that again. mainly because of convenience, right? You can do it 24-7. If you're a man, you shop online because you hate shopping in a shop. You get hassled. Um, and obviously, you know, to save time, you feel you get a better deal online. Online has sold itself very well. It's where you go to get a better deal. When you go to a shop, you go because you want to try it on. Now, I know a lot of people who buy online. What they do is they'll order five, seven items of the same thing because they're not sure if it's the right size, and they send back three. And this is a big issue for retailers. That means that 20% of your sales online are being returned, which costs, costs money, right? So this is, this is what it looks like now when retailers try to do omnichannel. What they're doing is they're basically saying click and collect, which is a lovely English term, which basically means you order online and you pick it up in the shop. Now, why is this important? Because basically, retailers, when somebody comes into a shop, they put the collect spot right at the back of the shop. So in order to pick up your trousers, you've got to pass the belts, the ties, the shoes. And when you leave, it, you leave, you leave with trousers, a belt, a tie, and a shoe. So you've bought two or three other items. So a very clever way to get you to come into the shop. You've done the convenience of online, and you pick it up in the shop, right? So one thing about retail, and I spent five years talking to retail people, is they're very detailed. They look very fashionable, but they are the most. They are more anal than bankers. They um, they look at the details. They look at they look at what happens behind the scenes. And if you think about omnichannel, what it's all about is about having a single view of where your stock is. So these are all the things that retailers love, right? They want to know if they can do omnichannel properly, they are doing all of this. They are, they are allowing uh, an item to be shipped from the closest shop to where you live or the closest shop to your office. Uh, that's actually quite hard to do. It sounds simple, 
It's quite hard to do from an accounting perspective. They allow you to pick it up in the store. They, this is what e-commerce people are learning now, is that if you allow somebody to return it to the store, not only is it better customer service, but when they walk into the store, you can sell them something else. This is very hard on, uh, online because if the courier comes to pick it up, the courier is not going to sell you anything, right? So you want to bring people into the store. This is the magic source of the back end of our Omni Channel, okay? And these, you know, obviously kind of obvious. This is quite interesting. If you go into a shop, most um, shop assistants will tell you, uh, we know where everything is. If you ask them really, they know about 60% of the items where they are. They can't remember where they put their shoes. So the technology that helps people find things in shops is very important. At the moment, that's all around RFID. People use RFID, they use Bluetooth. So this is the secret source behind um, what happened. So in order to make Omnichannel work, you need to have a single view of the inventory, which is this, and a single view of the customer, okay? So the numbers that I have got from vendors, uh, retailers, is if you do all of this, you see 20% increase in sales. So if you're a software vendor that does this, uh, you've got a good, a good sales pitch. All right, so here's some, um, the other side of omnichannel or smart retail is having a very uh, united view of the customer. Who is your customer? What do they care about? So this is quite interesting. This is data saying that basically why people enjoy omnichannel, right? Um, the first thing is that if you go into a shop and the associate could find an item, you're more likely to, to buy it, right? I mean, that sounds obvious. Um, if people buy with their mobile, 60% or 61% of these people would like to go to the store. You're mobile, right? You're walking around. You want to go to the store and you want to pick it up in the store, okay? And this is the clinger, is the bottom one here, is that actually a lot of people don't buy online because of the hassle of returning product. As soon as retailers say you can return the product anywhere to any of our stores, their sales go up dramatically online, okay? So that opening the gates for somebody to return an item to a store is very, very important. You don't see this happening very much, particularly in Hong Kong. Um, and this is the most important, is giving power to the consumer. Allowing the consumer to decide, I want to pick it up in the hotel. What we find in Hong Kong is that a lot of tourists come here. We get, what is it, 40, 50 million tourists a year? Some of you. And if you order an item and it got delivered to your hotel, the, you'd really be happy to do that and pick it up, especially if it's a cheaper item here than it is in the aeroplane or duty-free, right? Um, not so important, can jump. So this man, you might know, Jack Ma, he basically, China is kicking ass in the omnichannel space. And this is because China, the internet companies own all of the point, touch points. And now they are buying retail. Jack Ma has bought into in-time retail. He's bought into Herma. So what he does is he calls it new retail. His phrase is new retail, okay? What he believes is uh, it's all about personalization. It's all about using data. We had AI earlier today. It's all about using data to pick up all the different experiences that people have and serve them product. It's all about convenience. What he does with Herma is you walk into Herma, you can see the product, you can have, take a bite of an apple. If you like 12 apples, you can have them delivered to your house or your office within half an hour. So he's making it very convenient. And China is not famous for customer service. If you've bought stuff in China, the experience has not been particularly sweet until recently. And then there is the retailer side. Now, this is the part where omnichannel does not work. Retailers have a challenge. The challenge with retail is if you're a Jack Ma, you own it all. You can just you know, release some more shares and buy something. If you're a small retailer in Hong Kong, you can't afford to do all of this technology at the same time. And the vendors of technology only sell you pieces. They don't sell you the whole solution. Uh, with Jack Ma, as you can see, he owns everything. He owns the front, the entertainment, right through to the data and the cloud computing. 
but not everybody is Alibaba, right? So let me give you some examples of how it works in Hong Kong, all right? Um, this gentleman, Ricky Wong, uh, set up a company called HKTV because he wanted to start a new television station, but they wouldn't give him the license. So he goes, I'm an entrepreneur, I'll set up a shopping mall. Uh, I saw him talk the other day. What's great about him, he's a true Hong Konger, no crap, and he tells you how it is. So his first thing is, I'm losing money. How many startups, are honest, over there, will say to you, I'm losing money, right? But he's losing less money, so he's happy, right? It's gone down from a million a month to 600,000 a month. Why can he afford to do that? Because he is publicly listed. And I have learned in Hong Kong that if you're publicly listed, automatically your company is worth 40 million Hong Kong dollars, whether you make money or not. So he can afford to lose some money. He has 180 trucks that go all over Hong Kong. So part of the omni-channel promise is that delivery within 15 minutes, half an hour, same day. In Hong Kong, most uh, retailers deliver two days, three days. You know, they're not that fast. And this is a small place. He knows that the experience at Welcome or Park and Shop is so bad that once they've bought from him three times, they won't go back to Welcome or Park and Shop, right? And what's really interesting is that as soon as he's, he's a traditional internet guy, but he saw, let's open some shops. As soon as he did that, the whole smart retail thing kicked in. And he says that what people do is when they go into stores, they spend four times as much. That makes sense, right? It's food. You're going to buy cereal, you see some nice carrots. Oh, you think those carrots would be good with a bit of cream. So he, he sees the sales uptick there. And uh, Hong Kong is a very concentrated place. So he chose a place called South Horizons, and he put a shop in there. What was amazing, as soon as he did that, the sales, what's that? Quintupled, quadrupled, set tupled. Um, but what I like about this guy is he knows his audience, right? Millennials. He says what you need to do to get people to buy online is free shipping and free returns. What happens in the UK is if you pick up in a shop, they don't charge you anything. If they ship it to you, they charge you an extra five pounds. So what he's saying, to make Omnichannel work, you need to do free shipping and free returns. Don't charge the customer because you can make money from them coming into your shop. And only show them what you have available. It's amazing how many retailers, you go through the whole checkout process and then you get this big red thing that says out of stock, right? It's a, it's a horrible experience and it doesn't make you want to shop online. So let me give you uh, a couple more examples. This is um, Burt's Bees, okay? This is what happens in Hong Kong is retailers can't afford to do all the technology, so they do bits of it. Uh, Burt's Bees, you know, sells uh, lip salve. They have shops, little shops all over Hong Kong. Uh, this is an example of the weather gets cold in Hong Kong. At the moment, it's too bloody hot, but it gets cold. In November, about a year ago, they had built up a community on Facebook. They knew their customers. They had about 20,000 followers, I think. And as soon as the weather went cold, they didn't use AI, they used a human. They put out a promotion saying, uh, order your lip salve online, come and pick it up in the store. And then people came to their store. Now, what was unique about this, it sounds like a marketing gimmick, but what was unique about this is this is not a coupon. Uh, what actually happens is when you order that item, it tells you which store near you has the lip salve you want. So when you arrive at the store, they know you're coming, they have the lip salve you want, and they know your name. So it's very personalized. You arrive, you get your free lip salve, and of course, they sell you some baby cream, or they sell you some, some other cream. So they, they did very well out of this. Now, in order for that to happen, you can see here, within 45 minutes, they sold 1,000 samples. I didn't really sell them. But what's interesting is they used the online to drive people into the store. Once people, went, they knew they were coming, so they could manage the inventory in the store. What happens often with promotions is that you arrive at the store and they've run out of that freebie. The sales staff don't know what to do. They take your email address. You never hear from them. So by having uh, your retail connected up, you're able to deliver the product to the person in the store. Okay? Ooh. 
so here is what you see in Hong Kong a lot. This is a, a startup that I, I founded around Omnichannel, still around. What you see in Hong Kong a lot is people think Omnichannel retail means putting an iPad in the store. As soon as you've got an iPad, you go, tick, Omnichannel, done. But normally that iPad is just connected to your website. It does nothing else. It just takes your website and it puts it on an iPad. That is not improving the customer experience. It's not connecting your stock to all the different stores. It's not allowing you to return and ship things anywhere. It's just an iPad. In this case, it's slightly different. In this case, uh, UGG, Australia, the shoe brand, what they did was they basically made the experience like this, which means that um, the amount of shoes in the store, normally limited, right? What they were able to do was connect all of their stock all over Hong Kong and make it available in any store. So in effect, the girl coming in, if she doesn't see it on the shelf, and it's not in the warehouse behind them, she could order a shoe from any of the shops and be delivered to her, to her hotel, to her office. So you're extending the whole experience. This is, this is the thing that retailers love, especially in Hong Kong where retail is too expensive, is if you can squeeze very few products into a store, but the consumer can order from your whole inventory and have it delivered anywhere. In this case, these guys even put just one shoe, right? You're not getting both shoes. <laughs> it gets delivered to you, you know, very quickly. So this is an extension. This is a, a very good example of the endless aisle experience, moving away from the typical Hong Kong case of just an iPad with a website. I'm now gonna show you a little video. This is another startup that involved an Actimira. They have a very good technology when a guy walks in, what he's doing is he sees some items, he takes it up to a mirror. The mirror recognizes the item, it recognizes him, uh, and it proposes to him, it puts a picture on the screen of a Caucasian man, because he is a Caucasian man, about the same age, and it starts making suggestions of other items he can buy, right? And all she's doing as a salesperson is helping him go through it, telling him what items he can buy, making recommendations, he uh, orders that item. In this case, he takes it with him. But in other cases, he, he scans this, he takes it home on his, uh, on his phone, because men don't like to buy by themselves. Normally, men need to show that to their girlfriend, their wife, their boyfriend, whatever the situation is, and he finishes the purchase at home, okay? So this was an experience where the guy is in the store, he gets recognized, he gets advice, but he doesn't finish the purchase there. He actually goes home or to his office and he has all the data on his phone, all right? So this is a kind of one piece of the omni-channel. Like I said, in, in Hong Kong, the problem is that nobody is doing it all, right? You have people who do the delivery, you have people who do this kind of in-store experience, but you don't have the whole thing. Oh, I'm running out of time. So, my last slide, just before I get to my last slide. So the secret source to omni-channel retail is three things, uh, and if, a startup or an investor can crack these, they're gonna make lots of money. The first thing is a single view of the customer. You need to know your customer, where they are, uh, what they like, where they like to pick things up. You need to have a single view of your inventory. Now, I, I've invested in a few companies and usually they have one unit that makes them different from anybody else. In the retail business, it's inventory or SKUs. So if you have a single view of the customer, a single view of your inventory, and you offer multiple points of fulfillment, you are doing omni-channel. In Hong Kong, most people don't do all three. But let's move on to the future. My last slide, and then I can finish. This is the future in America. It's the big version. Amazon is doing this because you can order with your voice. Isn't that great? I want a new jacket, a blue one, please. They should know the size, they know where to deliver it. And what Amazon does is that they build up a whole ecosystem of apps that connect into uh, Alexa. Now, Amazon used to be ahead of the game. Uh, now you've got Google who've come up. Forget about this is just ordering shavers. You've got Google who are doing it. I have one of these at home, the uh, Google. It's quite funny. Occasionally, it'll turn on by itself, which is a bit scary. And in China, Baidu. Baidu has launched their own version. I think they have 25 million users. Everything in China is massive. 25 million users, and they have about 15,000 different apps that are connected. So the idea is you will be able to order 
anything from your home and have it delivered to you, right? Baidu can probably do this in collaboration with Alibaba. So this is the future of omnichannel, smart retail. And just to remind you, here I am. So take a photo. <laughs> Come and talk to me. All right. Any questions? Convenience stores with no staff, you just kind of take what you want and leave. Do you, are, I haven't heard of this in Hong Kong yet. Do you think this is going to start kind of slowly taking over Hong Kong? You mean no people in the unmanned stores? Yeah. No. We like people in Hong Kong. We, got, we need to give them jobs. Uh, I don't see it happening in Hong Kong because the retailers here are just far too old fashioned. They won't invest in that technology. I don't see it happening. Sorry, not for the next five years, guaranteed. Quote me on that. Another question? No? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>